The design change of the Super Heavy that shocked Elon Musk. Change can be either good or bad. Some people welcome it while others oppose it. However, for Elon Musk, change is the basis for his continuous growth in the space industry. He has overseen every change until now. For a change to shock him is nothing short of a miracle. Today we'll look at the design change of Starship Super Heavy that not only changed the future of the spacecraft, but shocked Elon Musk. What was so special about the design change that led to Elon Musk being amazed? Well, stick around to the end as we dig deeper into the details surrounding the spacecraft and more as we delve into the life of Elon Musk and his company SpaceX. Without further ado, let's begin. First things first, we shall discuss the Super Heavy, SpaceX's relatively unknown spaceship when compared to its popular Starship. However, I'm sure after this video that you'll understand the importance of the Super Heavy as well. We begin with the Super Heavy because, while it is less complex in some respects than the Starship, it is just as demanding and new in others. Let us begin by defining the Starship Super Heavy. A single Super Heavy booster is essentially a 69 meter long steel tube with a diameter of 9 meters. It should have a propellant capacity of at least 6 to 7 times that of Falcon 9 and 2 to 3 times that of Falcon Heavy. SpaceX's latest Super Heavy prototype, unlike the Super Heavy B4, can carry 33 Raptor V2 engines instead of the 29 Raptor V1 engines. While the V2 design simplifies the Raptor's design to make it easier to build, install and operate, it also increases maximum thrust by 40%. Regardless, SpaceX's eccentric billionaire CEO Elon Musk changed the launcher's design to fulfill the aforementioned objectives. But how do you go about doing it? How can these objectives be met and Musk desires realized? At first appearance, a new architecture of the pressure containers, hydraulic power units, and an umbilical discomfort positioned on its back are all exposed due to outer conduits and smaller plumbing protection. Large steel pugs have been upgraded, aside from their truss structures, to support the new Raptor V2 engines, which have previously been installed and tested on all Starship and Super Heavy prototypes. Its sleeve was made up of four 1.4-meter-tall steel rings instead of the usual three 1.82-meter-tall steel rings. This is the first time shorter rings have emerged on Starbase equipment. Aside from the Raptor engines, the Super Heavy's two most notable improvements are arguably the addition of enormous internal header tanks for landing propellant storage and the installation of aero covers. It'll fit over two new pairs of five composite overat pressure vessels or sealed copies that run about a third of the way up to the Booster 7 tanks, particularly on the current prototype of a new set of sharp edge aero covers. They'll probably mend wing-like structures to increase aerodynamic stability just like hits. On the other hand, a Super Heavy B4 contains four sets of two copies uniformly spaced around the perimeter of the engine area. Finally, the Super Heavy booster looks to be equipped with a full complement of internal header tanks, allowing it to separate all of the landing propellants. This minimizes the amount of pressurization gas required and makes maintaining a continuous supply of propellant for the Super Heavy Raptor engines throughout complex space and atmospheric maneuvers substantially easier. Due to SpaceX's decision to convert Super Heavy tank vents into maneuvering thrusters, the heading tank should lessen the chance of liquid propellant being accidentally spilled when the booster is in microgravity. With these changes, the new Super Heavy will surely be a game changer. The improvements, on the other hand, will amaze the spouse much more. To begin, SpaceX raised the Starship's nose barrels from 4 to 5 rings in height. Because the additional 5.5 meters of mass required to lengthen Starship is unlikely to be significant, SpaceX will stretch all Starship models instead. For variants like the NASA HLS Moon Lander and future Mars-bound Starships, which rely entirely on refueling to reach their destinations, Stretch tanks and more propellant storage could significantly increase the amount of payload that can be sent to the Moon, Mars, and other high-energy destinations. Then with Starship, SpaceX refined its welding method, resulting in a more durable and attractive rocket. With the exception of Starship MK-1, which never had its far flimsier nose completely attached, the Starship nose design has been extremely consistent since SpaceX began building the first prototypes in mid-2020. So. How do you think the video is going? Are you enjoying it? Another obstacle awaits. How will the prototypes be handled? What methods are being used to create the Starship? What is the vision of Elon Musk and how realistic is it? Before we answer that, please give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Also, 
consider subscribing to our channel so that you can receive the most up-to-date content regarding the eccentric billionaire Elon Musk. Now let us continue with the video. So early prototypes had to be destroyed, as SpaceX perfected the nose design and assembly technique for Starship SN8, the first prototype with its fundamental structure completed. To be honest, the early unflown prototypes and noses of Starship rockets were all constructed in exactly the same way. Despite the fact that adjustments and alterations were likely certainly performed in recent months. To begin, SpaceX would stamp a series of tiny metal sheets. After being positioned on custom-built jigs, they'd be welded together to form a slightly conical ring. Each subsequent ring would be smaller and more conical than the one before it. One by one, the five components would be stacked and fused together around their circumferences. A nose's most basic structure would necessitate 120 intricate vertical wells followed by four or five equally complex circumferential wells to connect the components into a single cone. By expanding the size of the gores, SpaceX's revised design attempts to make the operation easier. Apart from reducing the number of longitudinal sections needed to build the cone by a factor of two or three, SpaceX also decreased the number of stack sections needed by a factor of two or three, resulting in a reduction of at least two or three gores. Although the number of vertical and circumferential wells required to assemble a nose cone has been reduced, it remains significant. SpaceX appears to have decided to raise the size of the dome gores while reducing the number of stack sections required for dome assembly, indicating that the stretch performing manufacturing method used for nose cone gores would be used again. Despite being the first ship to employ the new design, Starship Plus 24 was completely stocked last weekend. A Starlink satellite dispenser is clearly visible in a section of SpaceX's future Starship prototype. Heat shield standoffs, ceramic wool insulation, and netting have been added in the nose barrel that the alleged Starlink dispenser is part of, as well as the first fully furnished prototype with an upgraded Starship nose cone design. To put it another way, this Starlink dispenser is quite likely to be included in the first orbital flight gear. This hints that this dispenser may be used to launch Starlink satellites from Starship. We have now discussed everything there is regarding the Super Heavy and the SpaceX technology surrounding it. I'm sure at this point you have quite an idea regarding the spacecraft. Now let me weigh in into the topic at hand. While it is true that Starship is the main ship that will truly revolutionize space travel, it's the Super Heavy that is doing most of SpaceX's missions and deserves the same level of appreciation the Starship receives. If something does its work in the background, it does not mean that it's not important. Thanks to SpaceX's brilliant engineers, nothing is out of reach in orbit. The company is poised for greatness under Elon Musk's leadership. For decades, he'll be remembered as the guy who made it possible to live on Mars. I am sure this video will help you understand the importance and all there is to know regarding the Super Heavy. However, if you still have any more queries, feel free to leave a comment below. We value our subscribers and we would love to interact with you. So, what are your thoughts on the alterations SpaceX has made to the Starship Super Heavy's new design? Please let us know in the comments section below. And if you want to see more of our incredible videos, stay tuned.